city councils, and right now, we're going to focus on the hotly contested mayoral election in Minneapolis. Big issues are at stake from the power structure at City Hall to the future of policing in the city. There are 11 candidates in the race, including the incumbent. Each day this week, we'll talk to one of the leading candidates about their views and their plans. Joining me today is Kate Knuth. Kate Knuth is a former DFL state lawmaker. She also led a program at the University of Minnesota's Institute on the Environment, and she served as Chief Resilience Officer for the City of Minneapolis for seven months before resigning in February of 2018. Candidate Knuth joins us on the line. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Kathy. Congratulations on the new show. Hey, thank you very much. We're having a good time. Uh, you worked for a brief few months in City Hall in the uh, Jacob Fry administration, so you've had a chance to watch him. How would you approach the job differently from Mayor Fry? You know, I learned a lot when I worked for the city, and one of the things that I learned is that relationships really matter and that no mayor has all the answers. So really digging in to listen to people and draw from and focus the expertise and the skills and the talents of people across Minneapolis to the work of building our city is really essential. And I think that relationship building and that um, deep listening um, and really valuing trust is something that I hold at the center of my leadership and I think differs from our current mayor. Uh, the issue, the issue in Minneapolis is gun violence. Let's get into some issues here. Uh, Quantrell Urban, you may know him, the founder of a street outreach group called Turf Politics, said recently that not a night goes by that he doesn't hear automatic gunfire when he's out making his rounds, making Minneapolis sound mm -hmm. like a war zone. What do you think is going on out there, and what would you what would you propose doing about it? Yeah, I think gun violence and on the positive side, public safety is the central issue of the campaign. And there are definitely neighborhoods when I'm out door knocking that gun violence is almost universally the issue people are concerned about. And, you know, I think it is a combination of pandemic, of increased gun ownership, of people being disconnected. And I think we as a city need to put making every neighbor neighborhood in our city, regardless of race or gender, income, zip code, uh, making that safety the center of what we do as a city. And I think there's things we need to do short term and things we need to do longer term. I think short term, um, we need to be uh, making sure we are um, having our police force operate as effectively as possible. And um, that means focusing resources on higher prevalent uh, gun violence areas, as well as making sure officers have what they need to investigate and actually solve particularly violent crimes. We also need to be investing in community, particularly young people, to make sure that um, every kid in our city feels invested in and bought in by the city and that they see the city as worth investing in. You know, I we talk a lot about the um, divides in the city, and I think in the middle, at the, in the last few weeks of an election, the divides are accentuated. But underneath that, I think we are so unified in building a safer Minneapolis and not accepting the status quo of either gun violence or police violence as acceptable in our city. You said that you want to make sure the police have what they need to do their jobs. You support the ballot question number two, which replaces the police department with a public safety department. Um, yeah. Try to unpack that for us. Yeah. So I support Charter Amendment 2 to create a new public safety department because I think, and I think Minneapolis residents believe, the status quo on public safety and policing is not acceptable. And it's not acceptable for kids to get shot in our community, and it is not acceptable for police to kill people in our community. And I think Charter Amendment 2 gives us the best framework to make the most effective safety system in the city. And now I have also been very clear that my vision of that department, and I think the shared vision of that department absolutely includes police. And two really important things about police. One, we need to ask them to do less. Uh, we don't need them to show up every time someone calls 911. We need them to be able to focus their resources more fully on uh, responding to investigating and actually solving violent crime. And then we also need to rebuild trust with MPD, not just through PR or community-based programs, although those are part of it. We actually need to be very transparent about the realities of policing in our city, particularly misconduct, and then have clear accountability when things go wrong. Do you think that Police Chief Arredondo has to go? No. 
Let me ask you a little more here about the ballot questions that folks in Minneapolis are going to go ahead and, and uh, vote on. Do you think the city council mayor relationship should be changed? That would be the, the, the first ballot question. Are you still undecided on one. that? Yeah. Yeah, so I was undecided for quite a while, but I recently came out um, in opposition to Charter Amendment 1 um, because I think uh, really what pushed me over the top is that we are at such a critical moment in Minneapolis on building trust in our local government and our democracy, and particularly in our multiracial democracy. And I think the way Charter Amendment 1 has been put on the ballot and how it has been campaigned for, I think it will undermine our ability to really build the kind of trust among and with different communities in our city to, to forge our path forward. And, you know, I also think in the last couple years, especially, it's not so much we need a strong mayor system. We've, need strong, we've needed stronger leadership in the mayor's office. And I think I bring that as a candidate with my experience and track record of success. And I look forward to serving the people of the city as a strong mayor in the office. We have just a couple of minutes left. What's the most important thing you could do to get a, a better working relationship with the city council? Many observers describe the council as dysfunctional. Yeah, I think it's really important for the mayor and the council to have really strong working relationship. And it's one of my big disappointments with our current mayor and my, one of my big frustrations. And, you know, I have started to lay the groundwork of relationships already, and that will continue. I will be actively meeting with council members to understand their policy priorities, to know what the priorities in their wards are. You know, one thing I have learned very clearly is it's hard to have a finger on the pulse of every part of this city. Minneapolis is big and diverse and dynamic. And I think council members are real partners and allies in connecting to each of their wards. And so if we do that proactive work together, when the debates, when the um, disagreements come, and they absolutely will, of course, we'll be better able to work through them. And, you know, as a former state representative, I think if you talk to my colleagues or people I work with, I just generally have very strong respectful working relationships with folks, and I will continue that track record in the mayor's office. As you know, since you worked in state government, a lot of things that government mayors especially want to accomplish don't come free. That includes uh, things on yeah. the state level. You can't have everything. Do you see property tax increases in the future for Minneapolis residents? You know, one of the things I think we're not talking about as directly as we need to um, in this mayoral campaign is the risk in our city budget, you know, and, and when I say risk, I am particularly focused right here on the cost of not addressing policing and public safety in the city. We've had significant payouts for police misconduct cases, and we've had significant payouts for workers' comp. And the city's self-insured, that means we pay into budget um, with, uh, uh, so we don't, we don't have insurance that goes outside of um, the city and right now we are not we're not going to be able to keep up with the cost of policing unless we start to actually change things so um, that is a real particular area of the budget I have a concern about thank you Kate Knuth I appreciate your time thank you so much I really appreciate the conversation that's Kate Knuth who's running for mayor of Minneapolis tomorrow we'll talk to candidate AJ Awed